I thought I'd do a presentation, one, hopefully to keep me on track. And secondly, because sometimes uh, images can speak a thousand words. So, um, so first of all, a massive uh, thank you to, to Simon and to Angela for inviting uh, me to share a bit of the story of Street Connecting. Uh, and also for, for opening up these spaces, because I think they're such an amazing space to share and to learn and to listen. So um, a big, big thank you. So I'm going to introduce uh, Street Connecting. I'm going to give you a whistle stop tour of kind of what we do, a bit of why we do it, uh, how it links into uh, neighbourhood democracy. And then I think, yeah, there's maybe some space for questions at the end. So feel free to shoot your questions at the end and uh, we'll take it from there. So Street Connecting started in 2016. So as a, as a, a project has been going for nearly five years, um, but it was built on uh, 15 years of community building in a neighbourhood. Um, so I live and work in a place called Furs and Bromford, which is on the east side of Birmingham in Hodge Hill. Um, so built on a whole um, time of living here and working here and trying to build community here before we started this kind of intentional um, thing called Street Connecting. So basically we try to unearth what we call connectors. I think some of you might have come across if you've done exploration of ABCD, Asset Based Community Development, you'll you know, you might have come across this kind of thought of a connector. And there's a bit of a description of what a connector is. I won't read that out, but um, you can have this sense of what a connector is. But so one of our connectors found this quote, and I think it's perfect. But so the person who loves their dream of community will destroy community. But the person who loves those around them will create community. And absolutely loved that quote because it's that sense of connectors come because they love community and they love connecting with other people um, rather than perhaps someone who comes with their own agenda. Um, and we really try and seek on, on earth the connectors in our community. And we draw those people together. Uh, this is a picture of some of our team. So this was just after the last, first lockdown was eased and we, we got back out street connecting again. Um, and there's a wider team of people in the community that are part of the connecting team. And then there are a whole bunch of people that don't necessarily come out door knocking and do the more structured stuff, but they're, they're connectors in their own way. And we try and find ways of supporting and lift, lifting up those connectors in our community and encouraging people who are, who are connectors. We don't always get the recognition that perhaps other people do in the community because they don't sing and dance about themselves, um, but they're just on the ground, connecting with people, listening, and just trying to get people involved. Um, we try and have what we call a different, we, what we think is a different kind of conversation. And again, if you've, if you've come across asset-based stuff, you might have heard this term, good life conversations. Um, and we understand good life conversations as having four layers or tiers, perhaps that sort of way of describing it doesn't always work, but what we kind of think of if we try and have a conversation with people and seek to have a conversation with people we're kind of looking for four things so the first one is that we just know each other so at the end of our conversation you know me I know you and we've made that connection and we hopefully we both know that we are welcome in this community the second tier is that we try and unearth what enriches people's lives what gives them life um, using that language doesn't always work. I'm not going to stand on the doorstep and say, what, what enriches your life? But we try lots of different ways to find out what do people enjoy? What are people passionate about? What do they care about? What do they love? What do they spend most of their time doing? And that's kind of the kind of conversation we want to have. Um, we then seek to, and this, is, this, just doesn't, this doesn't happen in one go. This can happen over a number of conversations. But we then seek to find ways that that interest could lead to an offering in community so it could lead to somebody not not recruiting volunteers some people say oh this is a really good outreach project isn't it and it's not and it's not about just getting people to come to our stuff it's genuinely trying to find out what people are passionate about so it might be that someone says i love cooking so obviously we could invite them to the cooking group we could get them to come to the cooking group but it's kind of taking that conversation further what do you love cooking who do you love cooking for just really trying to find ways that that could be an offering into community life. And then the last bit is about linking that kind of together. So we have a whole range of uh, community associations, places, groups, people, and just trying to bring that together. 
um, to, to kind of nurture this flourishing community. We have doorstep conversations. So we go out to people's doorstep. That's just how we do it. I'm not saying this is how everybody could or should do it. It works for us to an extent. We, we, we go out into the community and we um, go to people's doorsteps. We pick an area and we just go door to door. Um, and we seek to have that conversation on the doorstep with people. We look for people to host street parties. Um, we don't do street parties to people. We only do them if there's a host, if there's someone offering to be a host. And they're just a lovely blend. This picture kind of gives you a bit of a, a sense of that messiness and chaoticness, but it's just about a space where people can connect, get to know each other. And generally we find that's one of the first places that people will show up. Um, they'll see something from across their road and they'll wander over and then the street connectors are really good at kind of welcoming people in and getting them involved. Um, but they're a great place to kind of initially build that community and take community to people's doorsteps or as close as possible um, to people's doorsteps. We try and be present. This one's called Papau. So it's a pop-up place of welcome. So we try and nurture places of welcome in the community, being present in those places um, we haven't got a bustling high street in our community, but that could be a bumping place in your community. Just a place where people naturally interact and just being there, listening, um, being part of that space and seeking to have that conversation in that space as well. So this picture is at a school gate. So they've got one of, they've got a shelter. So we just pop up with a cup of tea and a chat when, when we can. This hasn't happened for 18 months, sadly, with, with COVID, but, uh, 12 months. But yeah, just kind of be in that space and inhabit that space. Um, we seek to have a bit of a deeper conversation so there's that initial conversation but it's that it's something that leads to inclusion uh, involvement and action so we're seeking it's not just about recruiting no it's not about recruiting people it's about seeking for ways to for people to show up and be present and participate in community not just be the recipients of community to actually bring something of themselves to that community to community and we support people's ideas. So the images on the screen is just how we do it, and they're called pie events. And basically, I think this is a great model for neighbourhood democracy. So people come with their ideas. The community shows up. They share what they're passionate about, something they love to do. So this is Becky. She wanted to do an after-school club. She shared why she was passionate about it, why she wanted to do it, what she would spend the money on. And then we voted on it in the room. And generally, everything gets supported, um, which is fine. And, and the whole neighbourhood joins in. But the beauty of that space is um, we say, if you've got an offer, then put your hand up, an offer. So Becky would, might get an offer of some equipment that she could borrow off somebody or a room that she could use. And there's generally just a community embracing someone's skills and their passion. And it's not about taking the money away from them. So if, if somebody offered a room, I'd, we'd say, well, what would you spend that money on then? If you haven't got to pay rent, what else could you buy? So it's that real sense of abundance in a, in a community. And then fostering celebration. So we, uh, we have an annual event where we share so some, some of these images are from a, an award ceremony that we, we, we've done. But the whole thing is about sharing stories that enrich our community story. And I think what we're seeking is this is how we do things around here. And it is interesting when we butt up against some elected officials because they don't quite get it because um, they want to do it their way. But this is like we say, well, this, you know, us as residents, this is what we do. This is how we do it. And we just share lots of stories. So thinking about neighbour democracy, um, I feel that if you, these are the, uh, the kind of levels, I think we kind of in those first three, that's, I'd say, our territory. So we're around um, real neighbourhood democracy, the flourishing, that civil society, community, um, local organisations, associational life. Um, but I think we're beginning to see ways in which we are maybe influencing, and I want to share a quick story after this, of ways that we might be just starting to, to see some changes above that. So... Um, this was something that happened after uh, lockdown and um, the picture in the middle is a lady called Sarah, who's one of our street connectors. She lives in two blocks and they were just frustrated with the council, that the council weren't doing anything with their communal garden. 
Um, and there was the mice in the flats that they just, the cows just weren't responding at all to anything that they, so we as the connectors kind of did some door knocking and, and just said, what, what could you do? So we just asked those three questions. What could you do for yourselves? If you just came together, what do you care about together that you could do something about? And they said the communal garden, we'd love to fix up the communal garden. So we said, all right then. We can help you a bit. We could bring some tools and, but we just said, um, let's just clean it up. So a couple of these pictures are from a day where they got some help. So it's kind of in that second category. What can we do with some outside help? Um, just cleared the place. And then after that, we left them to it and they just, they created this wonderful space. But alongside that process, there was quite severe structural stuff in the building the council just weren't doing anything. So encourage them to come together. And we invited one of the local councillors to come and listen to their story and what they were doing and what they wanted to see happen. And it was the kind of the beginning of interacting with those people in power. Uh, and a couple of things have happened. It's led to some, but it's, it's about keeping that conversation going. And I think that collective voice together that started with what can you do for yourself? So we didn't start with let's get the council down here, get them to mow the lawn, get them to fix it for you. It was, well, what can you do for yourself? Maybe not even with the right permissions. Don't tell them. Um, and then it led on to what do you need others to do for you? And that was kind of where we uh, got to that place of just really trying to nurture some, you know, you know what I would call local democracy at a local level. So, I think I ran over 10 minutes, sorry. 